Welcome to The Art of Semi-Fiction. I am Robin Miller. And I'm Jane Daly. And today we're going to be talking about different kinds of writing groups, critique groups, uh, beta readers, kind of what they all do, whether you need to be involved in one of them. And we're going to go down that vein. So I'm, as we've said many times, Jane and I are both involved with a couple of different writers organizations, but we're both on the board of Inspire Christian Writers. And that organization, which is now global, but it started in the greater Sacramento area as basically critique groups. That was really what a, it was. It was a critique group that kind of got bigger and divided and got bigger and divided. And, and now it is, it's a multi, as we've talked about in our, um, our, podcast on writing organizations now we do all sorts of things well that, and we even put on a conference yeah. we have an arm of our organization that puts on every other year we put on a full-on two-day plus conference yeah. and then on the off years we do a one-day intense really intense yeah. mastermind and that's with west coast christian writers mm -hmm. um which jane is also on the board of that as well and i'm kind of the red-headed stepchild to the board of oh. I was wondering why she was waving her cup of coffee. It's because it's the West Coast Christian Writers logo on there. I thought she was just impressing you all with the fact that she can drink out of a cup. Okay. Um, so writing organizations we've, we've talked about, but the minutia of a critique group or a writing partner or um, a writing group of some sort, that actually isn't it, as we talked about, isn't a part of all writing organizations. Correct. And there are plenty of critique groups and writing groups and things that have nothing to do with a writing organization either. Right. So, um, so I, we're going to start with some definitions because we always like to start with that kind of thing before we get into the discussion. Um, you know, you're shouting, right? Am I shouting? <laughs> really? I'm just passionate. I lead, okay. I lead multiple critique you groups. You are passionate. That's okay. okay. And I teach people how to lead critique groups. So clearly this is this is something I'm passionate about. And I'll tell you why later. That's my hook. Ooh, That's okay. my hook. Can't wait, can't okay. Wait. So a critique group is basically a group of people who submit work, usually up to a, a word count, um, sometimes 1,500 words, sometimes up to 3,000 words, depending on the group. And then other people rip your stuff to shreds, right? That's not exactly. Oh. Okay. We've now scared everybody away from doing a so critique group. That's what a critique group is not. Yes, that's not well, that's not my critique group. It's not on my watch, thank you. Um, a critique group basically though, it's not editing. A lot of people want free editing of their of their work and it's not, it, although it should always have the component of encouragement. Oh, absolutely. always, 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 because we're all in progress. We're all hopefully better writer this year than we were last year. So we all have to start somewhere. So there well, has and, to be encouragement. And I, I found that even people who are multi-published and you would think yeah. they don't need encouragement, they do. Even yeah. someone who has 15 books published, I'm thinking of Sarah Sundin. Yeah. I sent her a little email and I said, I'll never write as good as you <laughs> because I was reading her last book and I was so impressed. And so I, I sent her an email and she just said, thank you so much. I really needed that. And, oh. and so even everyone, beginner, intermediate, yeah. multi-published, yeah. they, everyone needs encouragement. So and that it, has to be. It, at the and, I, and I think that no matter what kind of group you're involved in, I think that that has got to be key, but it can't be. And this is one of the things when I first um, my first writing organization and critique group was with Inspire. And when I found out it was a Christian group, my first thought was everybody is just going to love everybody in the that name of Jesus. Wonderful. And everybody's going to say you're wonderful and it's fabulous. And so I wanted somebody to say, look, this is where your strengths are, but this is where you really need to, you know, learn something because you suck. <laughs> you know, you got it. You got to improve. You're good. You suck a little. Yeah, I mean, and you're good. The, the reality is you're not going to get better unless you have somebody right. who's who is respectfully and gently and lovingly calling out a truth. So Honest. a critique group, that's kind of the, the general remit of a critique group. And, and they come at all shapes and sizes, both online and in person, ones that are mixed um, genre, some that are specific to a genre. Like Inspire, we have a YA group. We also have a men's only group, and, and both of those are online, but we have mixed nonfiction and fiction groups. We, we just have a lot of different kinds of groups. Um, but the whole idea is that you get your work looked at, but it's not a full edit. 
It's not supposed right. to be a copy edit. We're looking for more substantial, substantive so, things. So really what you're saying is, is um, I need to make sure that I do my own editing before I submit to yeah. my critique yeah, group. Yeah, absolutely. That's, it's not the purpose of a critique group. And We're, please do spell check. <laughs> please. And if there's a little red squiggly line, have a look. Yes. Just, you know, just take a little pass for the red squiggly line. Okay, we're digressing. Um, so a critique group, again, is also supposed, because there, there are chunks of writing. You're not writing a book that's 1,500 or 2,000 or 2,500 words. So either you're going to take a long time to get through your whole manuscript word for word, or what really a critique group is supposed to be doing is alerting you to things that you then look for in your own writing. Right, going so that's, forward. Yeah, that's really the, the point of that. There are other writing groups that have other, so a critique group, that's critique. A writing group in general can say anything they want to do. They may want to be there to copy edit, to be the last, you know, the last bastion before you you submit. Um, they could be uh, specific to a genre that helps you to make sure that you're following whatever the industry standards are. Um, some of them, there's even writing groups who are really just, just groups of, of writers who just meet to encourage each other and hang out just to kind of have, have coffee. Basically. Yeah. So that's their whole, their social. Maybe, maybe really. like just, Oh, okay. So, yeah. And I, and I, it's fun. Well, we do, we do make a point of, of trying to work that into <laughs> everything we do. So, but, right. but it doesn't, but not necessarily, they're not necessarily work focused critique groups even though there can be an element of fun and there can be an element of social interaction and encouragement. Well, I think there has that. to be. There has to yeah, be. You there. can't just come in and say, okay, everybody sit down. We're going to. Yeah. And don't talk to each other. No, no That's asking okay. how, you know, your dog is or whatever. Um, but, but the really it's it, there to work. Mm -hmm. The two that I uh, lead one is um, mixed genre and it is for, I mean, it's mixed genre. It's mixed abilities in the group and, so we focus, we meet twice per month and we have a three hour meeting and we, wow. we do our like 15, 20 minutes of how you doing? Are you going on vacation? Yeah. How's the, you know, whatever. And then when we pray for each other, then we get into critique and we do about two hours of wow. critique. Oof. Yeah. And that then sounds intense. It, it, it is, but it's I'll t again, another little, Teaser. I'll tell you why I think a critique group is, is another teaser. Okay. Okay. So that's two. Let's I'll keep track now. I know how many teasers I'm doing. Hooks. Um, but then we then we break and you know refill drinks and go to the bathroom and that sort of thing. And then we come back and we do craft. Okay. So that's one of mine. Another one that you're in, in case you didn't know that. We also meet oh, twice okay. <laughs> twice a month. I mean, yeah, twice a month. But it's an advanced writers group, and so we don't need the craft so much. So we focus really on critique, and we really dig into what are you saying, and do your character does your character make sense? Yeah, and what is your theme, and what are you writing about? Yeah, and we, and we also because we're a little further along. I mean, we've you know Jane is, um, has a couple of books published, and many more in the pipeline. Um, some other people we're, we're all we're all actively publishing, so we can ask questions like. You know, I got a contract offer for this. What do you think about that? Where do you think that this publishing house might be a good? You know, we have industry yeah, instead agents, of craft yeah. agents. And yeah. Stuff, yeah. So anyway, so critique groups can be really tailored to where you're at. Um, writing groups can be literally anything at all, and they could have elements of critique, but mm -hmm. they don't necessarily have to. Um, brainstorming groups. One of my favorite things that I have um, ever heard of are groups that just meet for the purpose of brainstorming a project. Either there's groups that meet once per year. So they've met maybe at uh, writers conferences mm -hmm. or things and they come together once a year and for a weekend, they just brainstorm each other's pro projects or they meet for coffee every month and, and say, you know, I've got the, I've got almost my whole story lined up but I'm having trouble with this character. And so they talk through problematic issues. It's really not, it's not to look at your specific writing it's to talk about the story of mm -hmm. it and to brainstorm ideas. Well, and that can be really helpful if you're struggling with a title. Like, yes. I don't know what to call this book or I don't know what to call this article. Yes. What do you think? And then um, because at my previous critique group, I was, I was working on a proposal for a book and I just couldn't come up with something, the title that worked. And so we just, all of us just started, you know, spitting stuff out and I ended up with um, a lot of ideas that I eventually put into practice 
the book has not yet been published. However, <laughs> it's not because it, of the title. No, it wasn't because of the title. It's just very helpful yeah. to have some other people to pick their brain. Yeah. That's and, brainstorming. And when, and when you don't have, like, for example, one of Jane's pro projects involves foster care. And I happen to have been a foster parent for a long time. Getting with the person who knows something about what you're writing about in an area maybe you mm -hmm. don't know, that's great brainstorming, too. Right. It's basically a, a form of research. It's a form of problem solving. It's It's got really great benefits. And I love the whole idea of a brainstorming group mm -hmm. um, because I, I, I believe that writing, even though you were talking about that, that tower in another podcast, I think that we're it's really a team event. Writing should be a team event. It should be, and so often it isn't. And, yeah. and, I, and that's why it's fun to be able to get together with a group, even if it's a small group of people, yeah. and just throw out ideas. Yes. Very creative, very encouraging. It kind of gets the juices flowing. Mm -hmm. Another um, group that isn't uh, – it, it's not necessarily a group in that – in the same way the critique group is that you'd meet regularly and that kind of thing, but it's your beta readers. And I just um, was in uh, a, a, a situation where I was talking with somebody who's getting ready He's three books in a series and he's getting ready to, he didn't know the term. So I told him it's beta readers. Look for beta readers. Beta readers. And a beta reader is basically if you've, if you know anything about um, computer games or, uh, program computer programs they always put their game or their program or whatever into a real world live situation to see if they have any bugs and work them out and what do they call it beta testing exactly yes so so beta readers are basically beta testing mm -hmm. they they should be your target audience so they and they should not know you and they they're not reading to say you have a comma missing on page 37 <laughs> you misspelled the word on chapter 14 what they're doing is saying, I would read this, I would not read this, and here's some general feedback. Mm -hmm. It was really slow, or oh my gosh, I couldn't stop turning the page, whatever their feedback is. That's what a beta reader is, and you shouldn't be directing them. You should be handing them the book, saying, would you please read it and give me some general feedback. General feedback. And that's um, yeah. Are my, do my characters follow uh, a, a natural arc yeah. of discovery? Um, is you know, does my book lag in the middle? Do yeah. we have the, the sagging middle? As and would you recommend about? it? Yeah. Would, you, would re you recommend it to people who are like you who would buy these kind of books? Yeah. And make sure that it isn't somebody like, you know, your aunt or your no. sister or your mother, because they're going to say, oh, your writing is wonderful. Yeah. Don't so want good. that. And they're not your target. Unless, even if they are your target market. You don't, you would better to, to get people that you somebody, don't know. Yeah. Somebody who's not related to you, who can give you a, give you really good feedback and, and not just, I love your writing because yeah. I love you. Yeah. <laughs> That's rubbish. You don't need that. That's not helpful. Right. I mean, it's not that it's rubbish. It's just not helpful because even if it's accurate, will you trust it? No. I mean, I don't. Gonna, your ego is going to say, woohoo, they love my book. But yeah. I, I mean, yeah. there are people like, I love, Jane is one of my best friends in the entire world, but I know that she'll tell me when I am blowing chunks on some piece of writing. <laughs> exactly. She will do it. And that, and I knew that. But gently, we talked about critique. <laughs> exactly. so there's going to be, you know, you're doing great. You're on the right track. Yeah. You need some work. And and that kind of segues nicely into the last kind of group. And it's, it's a writing partner. And a writing partner is really one, maybe two people that you exchange work with it's like it's like all of these together so it's a little bit of critique mm -hmm. it's a little bit of brainstorming it's encouragement it's fellowship it's all of those things but in a more personal one-on-one -on -one. very small yeah like two or three people yeah probably no more than that otherwise you're pretty much a critique group and you, you don't have time yeah and you have to make sure if you're if you're choosing to go the writing partner route you've got to make sure that the person is your, your compatible skill levels because otherwise, if somebody is is an advanced, advanced writer and somebody's just learning how to put a sentence together, that mm -hmm. might not be helpful. You want you have to be kind of equal in yeah. your ability so that iron sharpening iron, not there's a noodle in a piece of iron, you know. Anyway, so but they're very, very valuable because most of these other things meet at a specific time or there's there's, you know, a certain number of words, whereas a writing partner, you could say, I want to submit this on Monday. My agent wants me to do this proposal. Can you take a look at this chapter? 
I want to make sure it's mm -hmm. it's ready to to be pitched. So so really, it has to be somebody that you trust. Yes, and 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 again, equal. If if, mm -hmm. if for example, if you weren't publishing or pitching or writing right now, and I was writing constantly, that wouldn't be even though the skill level is there and the love is there and the friendship and honesty is there. The fact that you would never be giving anything to me would be a problem. Right. That would be, uh, yeah. You got, you got to be kind of equally yoked, shall there we say. Equally yoked. I so like that. we've, and we've talked about some of the value. I mean, the support is phenomenal mm -hmm. because writing is difficult. You go through a lot of moments where you're, you, you know, self doubt is just screaming in your face. Yeah, how often do we look at our stuff that we've written and go, "This is so bad. <laughs> I should never, ever, ever yes. write again, yes. ever." And I'm, I'm going to show you some of the, the texts I've got from her. And you go to your critique Monday. group, and your critique group voice says, "This was the best chapter you've written yet," and, uh -huh. and you're like, "What? <laughs> <laughs> it sucked." <laughs> But no, your critique group gives you that encouragement yeah. to, to carry on and to kind of talk you off the ledge when you feel like just taking your manuscript and hit and delete. Yeah, and when you and the fact is, writing is also you're going to get some rejections and rejections. Really? I know, shocking. Oh, I, I've never. I mean, rejected. <laughs> never. None of us have. <laughs> but but that's that's a hard thing to if you put your heart and soul into something, you've worked on a project for a long time. And you get a rejection that's hard so a writing partner is also somebody who can say you know this is part of the process they're there yeah but not but not a you know you're great and we love you and you're gonna win american idol kind of a thing but in that we know that this is part of the process that wasn't the right fit mm -hmm. the right publisher the right editor whatever so so those are all to me really important reasons to to involve yourself in one of these kinds of, of groups you also get exposed to a lot of different kinds of writing, especially Boy, that's for sure. And, and if you write one specific thing, so you write, you know, YA romance or something, YA being young adult, um, the, sometimes you think, well, why do I need to know nonfiction? Why do I need to think about um, what people are writing in other kinds of, fic, you know, fiction or whatever? But the fact is you're writing what will increase in ability and skill oh, when I, you look at you and engage with other kinds of you writing. You will definitely improve by reading other people's work who write in a different, either different genre or just a different style. Yep. We have someone in our critique group who writes beautiful descriptions. And I I don't write beautiful descriptions. I'm very much, let's you know get the story moving. And when I read- Who would have thought that about Jane, Banker Jane? <laughs> when I read her, work, it, it encourages me to go back and say, how can I add some more depth and um, yeah. descriptions to what I'm writing? So whereas so when she's looking at Jane's writing, because Jane is great at pacing, and she's hitting all the notes in a story in a great way, whereas that other writer sometimes gets lost in, in her beautiful yeah, description. And she's like, and where was the story again? It's yeah. somewhere, it's somewhere, in, it's embedded in beauty but she struggles to find it. So you're helping her to find how to pace and to hit mm -hmm. those, those notes. And she's helping you to deepen and, and enrich and yeah, beautify so, a little bit. Yeah. Very important. And I, and I think that one of the things that, um, like I said before in our, um, when, when I, in my, the podcast we were talking about writing groups and Christian writing groups specifically, I was so afraid and there are, and they, there are some out there that are just, admiration societies because they, they, they're afraid that it's if, if you feel called to write if god's put a calling on your life to write and somebody says your writing is rubbish then you almost feel like you're you're saying god doesn't know what he's doing and what you know he's in the wrong so well, there, and there's two things wrong with what you said one nobody's writing is rubbish yeah there's always room for improvement yes even and, the best writers and the second is somewhere I, I think the train left. Um, the train of thought left. Oh well, somewhere there was It'll another brilliant back. point. It'll come back. But 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 that that is so. I mean, we really have to 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 consider that again with involving ourselves with with somebody. Are they going to with gentleness, but with honesty, talk into our writing? Because that's what I was going to say. Is you don't want there's to the be, train. You don't want to be in a writer's group that is only you're great, you're wonderful. 
Absolutely. So I hope that we have kind of gone over, we're going to talk more about um, writing groups in general, specifically critiques, because I mentioned that, um, and I'm going to, I'm going to give you what I, my hook was. I, when I started a critique group, my thought in a critique group, I wasn't leading it at that point. My first one, I thought that all the benefit of a group. So any of these writing groups, any of these brainstorming or writing partners, any of that, I honestly thought that the critiques I received would be the most beneficial aspect of that. And just giving critiques was helpful to other people, but it was sort of like the price you pay to get what is of value to you. And what I discovered, and I'll talk, we'll talk about this on another podcast, is that critiquing, if I had to choose between being critiqued by 10 people or critiquing 10 people, as far as improving the quality Ooh. of my writing, mm -hmm. I would choose to critique 10 people. Bam. There Bam. It is. So we're going to talk about that and we're going to talk about the why later. All right. Well, thank you for listening. This has been The Art of Semi-Fiction, where we explore every corner of the written word. I'm Jane Daly. And I'm Robin Miller. Thank you very much for listening. And don't forget to subscribe and to like us. Mm -hmm.